to stay and die. If we had a functioning news media, which we don't, there's a video that would be leading every newscast right now. There's nothing to do with a plane crash in Russia, a GOP primary debate, or even the indictment of every lawyer who's ever given Donald Trump legal advice, as important as all those topics may be. But this video is about Americans, including children, who died horribly this month. It's about how their deaths could have been prevented if their government was even remotely competent. The footage I'm talking about is an interview with a survivor of the fires in Maui. This interview was uh, conducted not by CNN or NPR, but by a real estate agent who moonlights as a citizen journalist. And he spoke. Good morning, guys. I love you all so much. I'm so thankful for the thousands of texts and phone calls that have come in. I'm going to get back to all of you. I promise I'm going to have to stop my current um, projects. You can tell I'm tired. I'm in another town. I'm driving somewhere to do something very important. I'm going to head back to the family. My wife has messaged me. She's feeling dizzy. She's overworked and overwhelmed because my mother, this has to do with the Maui fire, but it also has to do with the Paradise fire. And I'm going to continue to link those two together because everything that happened is so similar with regards to the response of our government who we pay through the nose and whatever you know want to you want to say about that you know and taxes and whatever <laughs> <coughs> to have and establish these public servants and they, they follow orders um, to do things my mother my wife take we take care of her 24 7. my mother is completely handicapped because of the wildfire she didn't follow oral orders and she didn't cook to death in her car, but she never got a penny. But they're going to give $700 to the people in Maui that survived. Of course, they don't have to give the $700 to the people that they um, forced to stay. And I'm going to share a video with you. I have to share this with you if you haven't seen it already. Uh, I just want you to watch this. And then I want you to know that I'm going to be in touch with you. I am going to be sharing our story about the campfire um, in Paradise, California. And as you know, um, we're also from Maui and Molokai. And, um, you know, anyone that's from Molokai knows, you know, we shop in Maui and uh, we've got family in Maui and it, especially Lahaina. That's our, our the first port that we come into from Molokai. And it's just an atrocity. And we need to figure something out guys we need to know how to i guess the the real answer so let me explain something people like fish that are that are exposing that are sharing the truth all we're trying to do is tell the truth i mean if you were the one cooked to death burned to death wouldn't you want someone talking on your behalf i mean i'm trying to talk on these people's behalf i love people so much and i want to talk on their behalf they suffered and at the incompetence stupidity i mean i've seen it i know it happens in our world there's i don't know i mean i have some theories but it is there's a scandal going on um obviously we have to say things a certain way so that we don't you know die we're going to be assassinated or we're going to be our, our youtube shut down i have 7,000 videos all about family and doing wonderful things and living life and I call it healthy fun without drugs, alcohol. <clears throat> I'm not saying that everybody is, is bad, anyone's bad because they drink alcohol. I'm just saying that I like to have fun just breathing fresh air, drinking pure water, eating the, the, the most nutritious food that I can find on the planet. I enjoy doing those things and I've been able to help a lot of young people in Molokai and in Maui County uh, by inspiring them to do things like, for example, sailing, sailing the Molokai Channel, sailing wherever, sailing to Majuro, sailing to, we even sailed to Johnston Island re at all recently. Um, that's the sort of stuff, the adventure, you know, kiteboarding, windsurfing, surfing. <laughs> Uh, climbing mountains, uh, you know, all those things. Uh, that's that's adrenaline rush stuff, some of it, but um, that makes life worth living and just incredibly fun. So that's what my channel is about. It's not about doom and gloom and all this horror and stuff, but I can't not tell you this stuff. I think that if I tell you what's going to happen is there's going to be people out there that are going to say, hey, I want to do something. The, the problem that I'm having is 
I, I'm sorry, guys. There, there's a lot of money. I talked to a guy. I'm going to tell you right now. I talked to a captain of a major boat over there, um, a charter service. And he said that, and I just want to share this with you. He said he's there. He's there right now. He said that uh, most of the people are dead, so they don't need any money. They don't need anything. The people that survived, um, they're they're able to take care of themselves because they've got family. A lot of these, the government's not helping, is what he said. Okay, I'm not going to say that. He says FEMA and Red Cross aren't doing anything, but he said we don't need their help anymore. I mean. They don't trust them. They're not helping anyway. So they just want the ability to, first of all, they wanted the right to get out of the fire. They wanted the the ability to leave, you know, not be forced to stay in the flames. Then they want the ability to, to get generators and things brought in. Um, I was asked with our vessel by Hawaiian people to bring stuff in. Um, <coughs> I'm, I'm afraid to say that I wasn't let, I wasn't able to, um, but I did some research and I was going to launch our boat and go and help, but the research I did, they said, no, we're not being allowed in. Some people got close to shore and uh, paddlers went out and got some of the stuff, but how do you put a big generator on a on a canoe? You know, it, it's possible, but it's, it's a little bit hard. So why can't we go? Well, I understand. Maybe it's a, it's a, uh, it's a graveyard there at the harbor. There's got to be, I mean, all of these rules that prohibit you from helping each other survive we're just trying to live we're just trying to take care of our families trying to feed our babies think about a little baby that needs to nurse you know my wife is still nursing and just imagine say oh we can't nurse the baby anymore i understand if you're weaning them there's a process there but when let's say they're little and you don't have any formula or nothing to give them you're just going to let them die you got to feed people and so you know that's what we're trying to do but back to this guy i can't say his name um what he says that it's a it's a big business opportunity and and i'm not going to mention the guy's name anymore i'm in big trouble for for even mentioning his name but this other guy's mentioning his name and you know who he is he's a real estate guy i think he's doing a good job i have nothing against him he is um he's a mover and a shaker um, you know, if he makes a bunch of money in real estate and gives the money to the poor and helps, helps rebuild the place, uh, you know, blessings to him. I think that's, that's a great idea, but, um, I'm just trying to figure out, I'm just, you know, a few things. I'm trying to expose things, you know, we have the right to know what happened and I have the right to share what happened as I see it and as I, um, hear from personal people so I'm going to be getting this together but this is going to become like a full-time job I'm going to have to start another channel and I'm going to probably have to be on some other platforms as well so I can talk you know more freely uh, I can't probably say everything I probably can't you know so I've lived in Asia 20 years when something like this happens they have pictures on the front page of the newspaper of the children burned the all of the gore and the horror, they have all that. Every day there's stuff in the newspaper showing fights with the police and all the bodies and just the blood. And, you know, it's like America can't handle that sort of stuff. And I understand that. And I'm not saying it should be out in the front pages of the newspaper. It's just that, brothers and sisters, it's happening. It happened. And we need to, I think we need to know about it so we can probably hold someone accountable at least by by telling on them you know does that make sense if if that doesn't make sense please let me know and uh i love you guys thank you so much sorry i'm so exhausted i'm trying to figure out my own situation here replacing a starter on a truck today i'm not getting paid for any of this i'm not i don't have a job <coughs> except to take care of my mom <coughs> And I'm always kind of like overworked and coughing a little bit because this fire thing has just really shook me up. Um, so watch this video, guys. Please watch it. You got to see this video. Please watch it right now. Keep watching. If we had a functioning news media, which we don't, there's a video that would be leading every newscast right now. It's nothing to do with a plane crash in Russia, a GOP primary debate, or even the indictment of every lawyer who's ever given Donald Trump legal advice, as important as all those topics may be. But this video is about Americans, including children, who died horribly this month. It's about how their deaths could have been prevented 
if their government was even remotely competent. The footage I'm talking about is an interview with a survivor of the fires in Maui. This interview was uh, conducted not by CNN or NPR, but by a real estate agent who moonlights as a citizen journalist. And he spoke with a man who goes by the name Fish, who survived the blaze in Lahaina. Uh, and, and here's what that man saw. Listen. And I went out and I saw the fire and it was, you couldn't even see the gateway because it was covered with smoke. And everyone's standing around just looking. And I said, I think we should get out of here because of the speed of this wind. It could be here in two minutes. So I went around back to Front Street and there were, all the cars were lined up, but none of them were moving. And I walked all the way from Safeway to the chart house. Not one car had moved. And I was wondering what was stopping the traffic. Well, it was a policeman. And I got to the end and I looked up north, there were no obstructions, there was no reason to keep those cars there. Are you sh serious? I'm serious as a heart attack. And I, I said, what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm under orders to keep them here. And I said, the fire is, is right around Safeway. It's going to hit Front Street. You know, these people got to get out of here. And he said, I'm following orders. No way. And I, so I just kept walking. I'm, well, maybe he knows something I don't, you know, so. And I keep walking down the highway, and I look behind, no cars are coming out. I walked all the way to Waikuli Beach, still no cars coming out. And I started hearing boom, boom, boom. And then I heard people screaming and stuff. You're saying they were blockaded in by the police? At the end of Front Street? Yeah. Like where that restaurant is? Right, where the chart house was. Where the chart was. house was, I should right. say. They, there was a blockade there, and they could not go any further. Right. From Safeway to there, not one car had moved. I mean, it's it's amazing. And we get that video from, I think it was hawaiirealestate.org. Gives us that video with that information. He says, all the cars were lined up, but none of them were moving. And I was wondering what was stopping the traffic. It was a policeman. A policeman. Sitting there trapping all of these people in, in the what is soon to be in Inferno. And as incredible as that account may seem, it's clear now that it's accurate. There are multiple witnesses saying the same thing. The Associated Press reports that uh, as residents of one West Maui neighborhood tried to flee using the only paved road in town, quote, car after car was turned back toward the rapidly spreading wildfire by a barricade blocking access to Highway 30. Turned back towards the fire. Supposedly, authorities were worried about downed power lines, and there certainly were, we can assume, plenty of downed power lines. But the problem is that the other option, rather than navigating around that hazard, was to stay and die in the blaze. Seems obvious which was the better choice, and yet police tried to force the residents to stay put. Many who listened and turned back, you know, ended up burning to death in their cars, being literally cooked to death in their cars. The most horrific death imaginable. Others were forced to jump over the seawall and tread water while inhaling smoke. The people who obeyed the authorities ended up dead. 